Good morning. Good morning. So good to see all of you here this morning. Uh, thank you so much for braving this crazy weather. I know that oftentimes when we wake up on Sunday mornings and we look out and we see a day like this, we think, well, maybe not. But all of you said, yes, I'm going to the house of the Lord, and thank you for doing so. <laughs> Number of people we want to remember in prayer this week. Uh, first off, um, Karen... Lyerly's father, James Shue, passed away. We want to remember 
her family in prayer. We rejoice for James. We're so glad that James has no more breathing problems. And boy, he could play that fiddle here, but I can only imagine the music that James is playing on the fiddle now. So we rejoice for him, but we do want to remember his family in prayer. We know it's always hard and it's difficult and it's an adjustment time. So please do keep Karen and Doug and all of their family in prayer. I did want to let you know that <clears throat> the funeral will be Monday, tomorrow, down at Mount Olive Lutheran Church. Uh, I'm almost positive that's on Gold Hill Road. Does anybody know? I think that's where it's at. And there will be, I believe what I understood was a viewing, if not a viewing, for sure a visitation at 2 o'clock there at the church, and then at 4 o'clock uh, the funeral will be. So please, anybody that can, go and support their family. I'm sure that they'll appreciate much of being there. And that is tomorrow at Mount Olive. <coughs> Excuse me. Some other folks we want to pray for. Louise was at um, Sunday school, but she wasn't feeling well. She went home. Let's keep her in our prayers. Sheila Rothgood, who has been, when I first met her, had just gone on um, hospice. That's Joyce's mother. She has progressively gotten better and better and better, and she now is off hospice. That certainly is the prayer uh, of all of us going up into heaven, and we say amen to God for his fulfillment and answering that in the way his will was our will this time, so we're grateful for that. Also, Calvin tomorrow is going back to the doctor. He is in rehab, but they haven't actually started it. Please, everybody pray today and tomorrow that Calvin's doctor will say he can actually start the rehab because he's excited about doing so. <clears throat> I have to admit that he's a little bit excited because he's not already started it as well, and I don't blame him. I would be too. So he's ready to go, and let's pray that God will open the door for that with his appointment tomorrow. We also want to remember that this Friday, Tammy is going to have surgery. We praise God that that's the case, and all of us need to early on Friday morning wake up and say a prayer that first the operation, everything goes well, and that second, um, that it's successful. That's what we're all praying for. Jimmy and Delana Boss need our prayers. Uh, please, please do think about them through the week, uh, that all is going well for them and that the Spirit is blessing them. And Cindy Miller's brother, uh, Bobby Hoover, who we know was electrocuted several weeks ago, uh, he needs our prayers as well. I saw him this past Wednesday, and uh, he had had his second surgery then. He's having another surgery this week. He's very grateful for prayer, I will tell you, whether you're there or whether you're not, so please do. And the Spirit is working with him. It's a slow road for Bobby, but, but he's moving forward, and we do want to remember him in our prayers. Now... <clears throat> A phenomena is happening today that I don't know that it's ever happened before in the history of Earth, and that is there's a birthday, but the person is getting a year younger is the way I understand it. I don't think that's ever happened before, but it's Pete's birthday. He's here with us, and I'm, I'm not sure. I think that going backwards a year, he's either going to be 24 or 25. I can't remember, but anyway. Um, Let's all sing happy birthday to Pete. I'll try to get us started. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pete. Happy birthday to you. And many joyful returns. Let's give Pete a hand. And anybody that you want to share that uh, that equation of how you move it backwards instead of going forward. We're all listening whenever you want to share. Okay, this week uh, we are have are gaining two new members. One of them was a member, but at kind of at through time was not, but, but now is going to be a member, and that's Dallas Brown. Dallas has been going to church with us for about a year and a half. And also, uh, yesterday we had a baptism. Carter Thompson was baptized at the YMCA, and that is, of course, Christy Thompson's son and the grandson of Pete and Tammy. We rejoice in both of these and with Carter I reminded him he's 10 years old now and I reminded him that part in the baptism before I actually did baptize him where I said do you renounce the devil and all of his evil ways. I reminded Carter that these next years as he's moving into the teenage period every morning he needs to wake up and 
and say that prayer once again that he does indeed them out. Because it's a difficult world for our young people, and I feel for them. We had difficult times too, but the devil's so much more busier now than he was when we were growing up. So um, we do rejoice in both of those being a part of our church family now. Um, and today at 4 o'clock we have youth group. That's very important, all of the youth that are involved in the program next week at the park, the youth are gonna help with the service. So uh, we will have youth at four. At Tuesday, we have 10 o'clock prayer group. Again, it's such a blessed time. Anybody that can come and pray with us and watch God work in our world, please do come. Wednesday, seven o'clock is choir practice. Next Sunday, church in the park. Please everybody realize two important things, location and time. Church will be at 10.30 for everyone next week. We're all meeting together at 10.30. But even more important than that is the location. We will be at the shelter at Dan Nicholas Park, the same one we were at last year. <coughs> as you go into the main entrance of the park, as you get further back and you'll see the tennis courts, there's a big wide open field and then the tennis courts the shelter's right there. It's on the left, the first shelter you can see on the left as you come into the park. So please, everybody plan to be there at 1030. We'll have our worship service. Afterwards, we're gonna have a great cookout. Thank you, Pete, and everybody that's gonna help him. And then we will uh, have the St. Jude bike -a-thon. And then you've got the rest of the afternoon to do anything that you want. And I only have one thing on my bucket list, and that is that when everything else is finished, I'm going to ride the merry-go-round. And anybody that wants to come and ride it with me is welcome to do so. I haven't ridden a merry-go-round in a while, and I'm ready. Um, also, I want you to remember that graduation Sunday is coming up June the 2nd. The deadline is May the 19th. There are forms in the education building beside the office door in the rack there. Please get a form for anybody that's a member of the church who is graduating this year or has graduated in the past year since last year when we did this. We want to recognize all of them, so please get that information in. If you don't give it to us, of course, we won't know. So please do that. Also put on your calendars for all the folks in your family who might want to attend. Saturday, June the 8th is our Vacation Bible School. It was very successful last year having an all day long Bible school rather than breaking it up into four or five different evenings. So that worked very well for us. We're gonna do that again this year. And uh, everybody do really well. We did great with our Easter egg hunt. Now they weren't all children, but we had 75 people here. So let's try to pull that same crowd back for our vacation Bible school on June the 8th, Saturday. Please do remember the Oregon Food Bank. You guys are always so good about doing that. Please continue that. And then uh, a note, <coughs> just a reminder, we do have two new wheelchairs in the uh, education building. One is upstairs in the foyer across from the mailboxes. The other one is downstairs in the handicapped bathroom. Anytime you need these, please remember they're there. That's what they're there for, and they have been used a number of times since we have gotten them. An important thing to also remember is if you do use it, be sure to take it back to the place where you got it, whether it be downstairs or upstairs, because everybody knows where it's at, and if somebody needs it, they don't have time to look all through the building for it. So if you will, please be sure that it gets back if you use it, and please do use it anytime. That's why we have them there. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes. Okay, so there's a brief consistory meeting after the service today, and it'll be here up in the front. Okay, any others? If not, let's stand and rejoice today as we sing from the green hymnal, page 406, Wonderful Words of Life. 406.
Let us continue with our call to worship, which is found in the bulletin. Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. God help us to hear the shepherd's voice and the follow him. <clears throat> Refuse to listen to the hireling or the wolf. Hirelings don't care, and wolves snatch and scatter. Refuse to follow bandits and thieves. <clears throat> Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. For Jesus comes to do us the life. Today we turn our hearts and attention to the Good Shepherd. Who loves the sheep and knows each one of us by our name. If you will, please be seated. At this time we'll now have our music ministry. <clears throat> If you will, please stand and let's have our prayer of confession at this time, which is also found in your bulletin. <clears throat> o Lord of mercy, who receives the humble, we ask for honesty to accept responsibility for our sins. We ask for courage to make our confessions, to seek your forgiveness for our offenses, and to extend the same forgiveness to others to extend to us. May we have the grace to submit our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. For all our sins, O Lord, we beg your forgiveness. Amen. This morning I would like for us to do something a little bit different. I think when we get to the sermon it will fall into place while we're doing this. Um, I want us to just turn. We don't need to get up and move all around the church, but just turn to the people that are close to you and in your own way say to that person, peace be with you. You can say, I love you. I'm glad you're here today. The people in front of you, behind you, whatever the Spirit leads you to say, just greet the person that's here, if you will, please.
Okay, let us continue standing as we move on forward and we use our Apostles' Creed to proclaim our faith. Note that today it's on page 38 in your red hymn book. I'll give you a little bit of time to get there if you don't have it. It's usually in the bulletin, but the bulletin is full today, so we'll turn to page 38 in the red hymn book, or you can use your memory if you want to. You've said it a couple of times before. Let us begin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated at this time, and Dallas, if you would please come up. Again, Dallas is no stranger to any of us. He grew up here in the church, baptized and confirmed here. And um, at this time, because Dallas has been away for a while, and now he has come back into the fold of grace, Lord, so as well as into the fold of our Lord Jesus Christ. At this point in time, um, he wanted to come back and become a member of Grace Lord Stone. We are here to receive Dallas Brown into the membership of Grace Lord Stone Reformed Church. Jesus said, Every man who publicly acknowledges me, I shall acknowledge in the presence of my Father in heaven. Do you affirm your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your intention to live a Christian life? I do. Will you, insofar as you are able and by the grace given you, always remain a faithful member of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, coming to the Lord's table, loving and serving God in the world and bearing witness to the Lord who is risen? Will. will you participate in the life and mission of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church, worship regularly, and serve Christ as you are gifted through this family of faith? I will. Members of Grace Lower Stone, do you, the members of this congregation, welcome Dallas into your full membership with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities? And do you promise him your friendship and prayers as he we share our life together as the people of God. And if you do, please say, we do. We do. Amen. I give you the right hand of fellowship, receiving you into the full membership of Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church. Welcome. And again, amen. Thank you, Dallas. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. Welcome home. We are thankful for the many blessings in our lives. Receive from us these blessings, God, these gifts which we are about to give and help us transform them with the power of your love. May the gifts we give become witnesses to your resurrection, proclaiming your power and forgiveness throughout the world. At this time, if the ushers will come forward, while they are collecting the offering, we will sing for the beauty of the earth and the words are found in your bulletin. Thank you.
Please rise. gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who gave himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. If the young people will please come forward. We mentioned a number of people earlier that we want to pray for. Please do keep all those people in your prayers this week. Are there any others that we would like to remember at this time? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beauty of your earth. Thank you for the springtime. Lord, we know that the pollen, even though it may affect us adversely, is a part of your creation. We appreciate that the earth is bursting forth with new life. It reminds us so 
of the resurrection of our Lord. Thank you for the rain. We know that the earth needs this. We know that farmers are beginning to plant crops and that they need the water to fall on those crops. We're just so grateful that you give us such a beautiful creation and that it's not only to our advantage as far as providing us with oxygen and providing us with the food that we need to nourish us, but also it provides us with the beauty at this time of years for our eyes to behold. We are so grateful for that, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you today for our freedom. We thank you for the freedom that first your son's sacrifice gives to us through his death and resurrection. We are free to live forever, and we're so grateful for that. We also want to praise you for the freedom that we have as Americans living in this great country that we live in. Lord, we know that our ancestors mirrored the government that you gave to the children of Israel when they were released from bondage in Egypt with our own government. We also know that, as humans often do, we tinker with things that are good and they turn out to not be so good anymore. We pray that you would be with our government. We pray that you would be with each of us, that you would help us to understand that with the democracy that we have, we also not only receive privileges, our many freedoms among them, but also, Lord, we have a responsibility, and that is to make our government function as well as it possibly can. Send your spirit to us in this election year so that we first ask you to come and then that you do come and you press on our minds what direction we should go playing our part in this wonderful government that you've given us. Do come and heal our government in any way that it needs to be. Send peace to the hearts of not only our leaders but also to the leaders of all the world so that war shall cease and productive life can once again reign over our earth. Lord, as we are remembering our freedom of religion, we give you thanks for this place, this place of worship which has stood here not too many years off. We'll, we're already well past two centuries that this place has stood, that folks have come here to worship you, to praise you, to receive your forgiveness, and to nourish their souls as they journey to your eternal life. We give you thanks for this place. We also give you thanks for the freedom to be able to come here or any place that we choose to worship. We know that while we are giving that thanks that we have brothers and sisters throughout the world who are not so lucky, who gather together today in fear sometimes for their life as they simply come to worship you. We ask that you send the spirit to them to bless them, first to nurture their faith so that they grow in their faith even more so, also to give their hearts peace if they are in adverse situations. Lord, you are so very, very good to us. In so many ways you are good, but especially in the gift of healing, whether that be healing of our minds, healing of our spirit, healing of our body, or whatever healing it is that we need. Lord. We ask that you would spiritually heal us and that you would remember all these people that we have brought before you this morning who need your healing. We ask that especially today you would be with those in our congregation who need healing, Angie, Brent, Cindy, Richard, Avis, Barbara, Delana, Jimmy, Wayne, Craven, Annie Sue, Sonny, Carolyn, Martha, Katie, Calvin, Linda, Shelby, Joyce, Jackson, Edith, Mitzi, Ruby, Chris, and Joni. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for allowing us to watch as you heal. And thank you for giving us the courage and the strength through the Holy Spirit to accept when your answer to prayer is something different than what we thought was to be the answer to our prayer. We know that if we pray things in your name and according to your will, that we will always get a positive answer. Thank you for being the Lord of life. We praise Jesus for his resurrection. We praise you for the glorious cloud of witness that we are surrounded by those who have gone on before us, who stand as an example of the life that we should live. And we know that only they were able to do this to be such an example because they were following the supreme and perfect example, Jesus. We ask that you send the Spirit to us so that we too might walk in Jesus' footsteps, do his way, and please you in doing your will. 
all of these things we pray today in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will, please now stand. We're going to be singing once again in the Green Hymn Book, page 688, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. scripture today we are going to read together it's found in your bulletin it is the 23rd psalm the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second strip here today comes from the book of 1 John. It comes from the third chapter, begins with the 16th verse. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. By this ye shall know that we are of truth and reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has indeed given us. Our final scripture today comes from the Gospel of St. John. It comes from the 10th chapter and begins at the 11th verse. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep or not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. Jesus again says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will heed my voice. So there shall be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lie it down of my own accord and will. I have power to, to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Let us stand and sing the Gloria Patria together. You may be seated. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be wholly acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Before I get started, we talked about prayer earlier in the prayer group and the fact that we watch prayers be answered. And uh, I have had that happen here this morning. I didn't realize it, but when I went to give the children's sermon, I took my glasses off and set them down there. And when I got back up to the front, I started to panic because I looked everywhere and I couldn't find my glasses. The spirit told Jeffrey to tell me to go back and look at that pew and I found them. So, so prayer does work and, and I'll assure you I was praying 
fervently that God would help me find my glasses, and he did. And thank you, Jeffrey, for allowing the Spirit to speak through you. This morning in the Christian church throughout the world, not all Christian churches, but in many Christian churches, this Sunday is known, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, as known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, there's a reason for that, and that is because, as I've talked about before, this lectionary series, that if we follow it, and remember, Sharon's good enough to put it in our newsletter, so if you'll just follow that, and on Sundays you get to take a day off because I read it. You don't have to read it. But through the week, it doesn't take very long at all, a little bit of time out of each day. If you follow that series, you will indeed have read the entire Bible and some parts of it multiple times in three years. It's a great, great program, and I hope you guys will take advantage of it. On this fourth Sunday, we always focus on scriptures that point to Jesus, our risen Lord, as the Good Shepherd. And we know indeed that Jesus is our Good Shepherd, and we know, as we heard in this verse, that there is indeed one flock and one shepherd. Now, we acknowledge the one shepherd always. We know that without any doubt, that one shepherd is indeed Jesus Christ our Lord. We indeed do follow him. And where are we following him to? To heaven, to spend eternity with him there, wrapped up in his arms of love. Now, when it comes to the one flock, we as Reformed people believe that what that one flock is, is the Holy Catholic Church. And that is Catholic with a little c. That word Catholic means universal. What we need to always keep in mind is that this universal has two dimensions. The first dimension of the universal or Catholic church is what we think of with universal is the geographical dimension, which means the church throughout the entire world. We do believe in Jesus Christ church throughout the entire world. But the second dimension of the Holy Catholic Church is time. Because we believe that this church, which stretches across the entire world, stretches back to the apostles, to the beginning of the church, and every Christian that has been a part of Christ's church up until this day, those of us who are a part of his church today, and all those that will live after us who accept Jesus' gift of eternal life and follow after him, all these people represent the Holy Catholic Church. It's only holy because of Jesus in and of ourselves. There is no holiness. So we do believe in one flock and in one shepherd. Now today, what I wanted to reflect on is something that we don't think about so very often. We think about the scripture. It's one of the most well-known scriptures, and we actually repeated it together this morning, the 23rd Psalm. Now, we know that this begins, the Lord is my shepherd, so it certainly is appropriate for Good Shepherd Sunday. We usually think about this during the time of death, but there is much, much more meaning. It's actually six different sections of the 23rd Psalm that I would like to talk about this morning and to look at it in a different way than we usually look at it. In the beginning, I would like for us to realize that these six different sections, in every one of them, Jesus is coming to mankind when mankind is in a needing situation. And he doesn't just come to them. He comes with welcoming arms to people in each one of these six situations. Now, as we understand that Jesus is coming to us welcoming, we also have to understand that the Bible is very clear that we indeed are to follow after Jesus. So each one of these six sections where Jesus is telling us that he is going to be with us and welcome us into his arms when we are in need. So we have a lesson to learn here today, and that is that we too are to go out into this world with our arms open and welcome people to us when they are having these needs. And by doing that, we are drawing them close to Jesus and opening their heart to the Holy Spirit so that they might learn to love our Jesus as we do, and they might accept his gift of eternal life and follow him to heaven. In the first of these six sections, we hear, I shall not want, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I don't think that generally when we think about this, we realize 
that what this need is that's being met is something that is very prevalent in the world today. Lying down in green pastures, having a safe place to go to sleep at night. We have many people in this world that do not. Jesus says to these people, I know you're there. I'm watching after you. I'm going to help you out. My arms are open and welcome to you. And as Christian people following our Lord Jesus Christ, we too need to be concerned about this. That unlike us, at night, many nights, there are people who lie down and it is not in green pastures. We have helped in a number of ways. I'm so proud of this congregation. You guys are so loving, so generous, so giving. Uh, the one example that I remember was the Monica Alvarez house and her ministry that she has working with veterans. We need to keep our hearts and our minds open to the fact that there are people who do not have a safe place to sleep at night and we need to do what we can to alienate that problem. And remember that there are times during the year that more so than right now we need to think about this and that's when it's cold and when that cold is coupled with wet. The next place that I would like for us to look at in the 23rd Psalm, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Jesus is with people when they are not beside the still waters, when they are by turbulent waters, when they are by what we call floods. Jesus opens his arms to people that are victims of floods. Jesus opens his arms in welcome and we too should open our arms in welcome, following Jesus' example. And this congregation has done that in the past before too, when there have been needs in the world, and we need once again to keep our eyes open so that when there are people that are affected by flood, and fortunately in our area, here close at home it doesn't happen so very often, but when it does happen so that we help with rescue missions, so that we help to establish safe places for people to stay until they can get back in their homes, so that we help and provide safe food and safe water for these people. We need to follow Jesus' example when people become victims of floods. As we move on in the 23rd Psalm, we hear the words, He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now this one is very dear to my heart. Jesus' arms are always welcoming to those who are looking to be led in the paths of righteousness, who wish to have their souls restored. And where very often do these people go? But to this very place. Because Jesus welcomes someone new into this building, we need to follow his example. A member of the congregation, and I'm not going to say which service they were at, and I'm certainly not going to say who this person was, but in talking with them in the past several months, they mentioned that someone new had come into this room and that they had observed and that on that Sunday, there were only two people that they saw that spoke to the person that was new. That was themselves and myself. Now, we need to work on this. I need to help you work on this. And the fact is that we started that this morning with sharing the peace or whatever we want, with loving one another, let's just call it that, between our confession and the creed. From now on, I think that we'll try this out and see how it goes, but I think this will help remind us each Sunday morning to look around and see through who's here. And if we do see somebody that's new, to remember that we want to welcome them in the same way that Jesus has already welcomed them into this room. This is very important for us to do. As we move forward into the 23rd Psalm, we see, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now on this one, we go to where we usually think of the 23rd Psalm. And our congregation is already very good about this. When people are grieving, we are there for them. Of course, tomorrow, we're going to have another opportunity, if it's possible, to do it once again down at Mount Olive Church. You guys are very good at this, but let us remember that as we are opening our arms and spreading Jesus' love, we open our arms and welcome to those that are grieving, that it's not always that people are grieving because of the death of a loved one. People grieve for many reasons. 
Let's be sure that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we open our eyes, our ears, and most importantly, our heart, looking for these people that are grieving and that we welcome them in the same way that Jesus does. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. This certainly we find in the 23rd Psalm, and it again is very close to my heart, but for a very different reason. I like to eat. I know many of you like to eat too. We enjoy eating. When Jesus finds a hungry person, he opens his arms in welcome to that person, and we are to follow that example. And again here, I am so proud of this congregation. I watch the box that we have in the education building where we place food for the Oregon Food Pantry, which is one of our local missions. And you guys are so faithful. And again, keep up the good work. You're already, you've taken care of this one. Do bear in mind though how the Spirit led David to finish this. It's not always an easy situation. The Oregon Food Pantry is very easy for us to do. But sometimes we have to watch out for people in their hunger in maybe more adverse situations. When we're out in the world, just keep your eyes again, your ears again, and your heart again open, looking for people that might be hungry. I know that oftentimes when we see people that at least want us to believe that they're hungry, we're a bit cautious. But uh, something that I try to do is keep little packs of, um, we used to call them nabs when I was a kid. They're cheese crackers with peanut butter in them. That peanut butter is nourishing. I try to keep those in my car. I don't want to give somebody money for fear that they might use it for to do something that's going to harm their body. But if you've got that little pack and those things stay good for a long time, they, I certainly run out before they run out of their expiration date. We can, in the world, go out and help people that are hungry and it might be in a little bit different situation than placing food in the food box. Again, remember, that we need to welcome people in the same way that Jesus does when they're hungry. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now in James 5, verses 14 and 15, the Spirit has led us to understand that at times when we are sick, especially when we're very sick, instruction is given there of taking olive oil and placing it on the hand of someone, on their forehead, it's not that there's any magic in the olive oil, but it's an outward sign of our faith that the Spirit is going to come and heal. We've done this before, and this anointing is what is being talked about here. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Here we find Jesus, our hands open wide in welcome as he heals. And we too can be a part of that process, opening our arms in welcome helping people to heal. I personally believe that half of healing is in our minds, in our psyche. Having a good spirit, having a reason to want to heal in some instances. Now there are people that would disagree with me that it's half, but I really believe it is. It certainly plays a part, whatever portion you wish to give it. Now, we can go and encourage people. Some of us have medical situations where we're able to help people. But if we can't physically help them medically, we certainly can encourage them, uplift their spirits, and set their minds so that they do indeed want to recover. We too can open our welcoming arms to those who need to be healed and do not ever forget that wonderful gift that our Lord has given us the gift of prayer. And many of us, if not all of us in our lives, have used that, cat, that tool to help with healing. As we continue and we finish with the 23rd Psalm, we see surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In ending with what we have talked about today and with this verse, I am reminded that Jesus told us that we are to become as little children that our love is to be unconditional like a little child, an innocent little child. And we know that that is the same love that God has in his part, both the Father and the Son, as well as we include the Holy Spirit, that spirit of unconditional love that a little child has and that they gain from the Holy Trinity. Let us keep that spirit in our heart this week. I challenge you to keep that spirit in your heart, not just this week, 
but as you move forward in life, as you remember these six sections that we have focused on this morning from the 23rd Psalm, open your arms in welcome to our brothers and sisters in need in the same way that our Lord opens his arms in welcome <coughs> when all of us are in need. Amen. Let us continue our worship with our closing hymn in the Green Hymn Book, hymn 690, He Leadeth Me. Please stand. <laughs> 